could go all the way, and he does. Opening handoff from scrimmage. And a very rare Thursday afternoon. Rebels go 62 yards. But Annie, one of the years, thrown for 1,260. And great technique. What a play for the Rebels. And the Rebels touchdown. Blocked in the end zone and a touchdown for Champlin Park. Back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes, yes. Goal. 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 Yes. 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 From a damp Champ Park, Champlin Park High School and Rebel Stadium here tonight on QC TV Sports, we have Week Six High School Football. Champlin Park hosting the Centennial Cougars, coming in ranked number sixth in the state in Class Six A. Champlin Park at an even three and three, looking for the upset win against Centennial here tonight, along with Jim Childs. I'm Jim Erickson. It is going to be rainy here tonight. Conditions might be a factor, Jim. Yeah, and uh, if you're going to pass the ball tonight, you better have a dry football there. Uh, and that's something that the Centennial Cougars don't do. They are uh, they are a run first offense, and we'll have to see. We had a, had a chance to see them last week. Came out very impressed with their running attack. But this this uh, ch this uh, Champlin Park offense uh, can be dynamic at times, Jim. Champlin Park, like we mentioned, three and three on the season, but they have a quality win over Maple Grove. They're also coming off a win over Blaine, 44 to 33. They're looking to make some noise here tonight. And you mentioned Centennial's running game. Cummings, their quarterback, last week didn't have to throw the ball, only two of four for 18 yards because they have uh, Harper, the running back, who ran for 123 yards against the Tornadoes last week, and he's coming in with big numbers here this season for the Centennial Cougars, 748 yards, averaging 6.1 a crack, and we saw in that game last week that they run the ball downhill. So it's the Champlin Park offense, a little more spread out, more passing against the running offense of the Centennial Cougars. You can see that it is running here tonight. The field and the ball will be wet. We'll take a break, and Jim and Jim, that's Jim and I will be back with a kickoff coming up after this on QC TV Sports. See you right there. Wait. Use the shovel and bucket of water, remember? Drown, stir, drown, feel. Then make sure it's cool. Where'd you learn that? Smokeybear.com. Brushed up on some tips before we left. Don't want to start a wildfire, right? <laughs> Only you can prevent wildfires. As Americans, there's one thing we can all agree on. The promise of our Constitution. And the hope that liberty and justice is for all people. For over 100 years, the ACLU has fought on behalf of millions of Americans, protecting our vote and our voice. Freedom to love who we love, the right to choose, and much more. Learn how ACLU's Defending Free Speech and all our civil liberties at myaclu.org. I had to leave my baby in the hospital in the queue. If we come together, we can help every mom and baby be healthy and strong. Joy March for Babies, a mother of a movement. Back at Champlin Park High School, technically Brooklyn Park. Address here, turf field. It's going to be damp here tonight. And it's Centennial 5-1 and one against 3-3 three and three at Champlin Park. Jim Childs, Jim Erickson here. Centennial with the victories to open up the season against Coon Rapids, Blaine. Their only loss is to Maple Grove, 41 to 28. And since then, wins over STMA, Osseo, and Anoka last week, 35 to 13, a game that we had here on QC TV. Meanwhile, Champlin Park opened with a loss at Anoka. Then Maple Grove, big win, 25-24. Shutout Osseo, lost to Coon Rapids, STMA, 
But then uh, last week, they scored 21 points in the second quarter, Jim. Uh, it was 28-13 at half, but then Blaine made it close going into the fourth quarter, 28-26, and the Bengals ended up uh, falling in that one with uh, Champlin Park winning it by 11, 44-33. Yeah, and the, the two key uh, offensive factors, uh, Arthur Russell, the running back, comes in with uh, five touchdowns on the ground, one in the air, and uh, really this offense is run through Preston Telke, dual threat quarterback. He's uh, uh, throwing for... Uh, uh, over a thousand yards, but he's run for over 400 yards. In fact, he's ranked right now 15th in 5A or 6A as far as a leader on the ground. Dynamic. You, get, he can, you can roll him out, and he can uh, put it in a shirt pocket, no problem. He's a good dual threat quarterback. Mav Harper is the man who's going to be doing the kicking here for Centennial there in the white. Arthur Russell is back deep here for Champlin Park. He's kind of a do it do it all guy for him for Champlin Park and for the Rebels and Harper will boom this away this one's underway Metro North sub district redistricting these teams haven't played for a while there's a good return by Russell out across the 30 yard line and that's where Champlin Park the home team will get the ball here take a look at starters and all that but these teams have not played the last two years 2021 or last year with the redistricting, and now they're back to being in the same sub-district. And there you see uh, Preston Tilke out on the field here running this Champlin Park offense for the Rebels. Yeah, very good, and, and he's got a great running back right next to him. He's got some truly really talented re uh, receivers along, too. Tilke, they'll run right off the first down play, and it's a give to Russell. And Russell gets hit at the line of scrimmage and pushed back. We saw the Centennial defense. They were very physical. Uh, against Anoka last week and a big play there. Yeah, that was Marcus Whitey. He comes in with uh, six sacks. Uh, he and number 89, Melvin Wallace, are the two to watch up front. Josh O'Shea uh, saw it, had a fumble recovery last week, but those two uh, right in the center and on the right side, very, very active. Luke Gilk is the tight end here in the near side. Two wide receivers uh, wide left here for Tilke, who rolls against his body, will throw for the first time. He gets it to the stick, gets caught complete and that's a first down here for Champlin Park on second down and 12 the completion to uh, Jaden Gabazemore with the catch coming in here with 13 receptions that is his uh, 14th of the season yeah great job catching it with your hands out in front of your body but what a pass by Tilke rolls out throwing against his body and puts it right where Gabazemore can catch it First down and 10, ball across the 40, 41-yard line, just underway, opening possession here for the Champlin Park Rebels. will go on the ground here with Arthur Russell. Russell with a cutback, 45-50, and he's in the Centennial territory, spun out of bounds here in the near side of the field. But uh, after a nice pickup of 11 yards, that's another first down here for Champlin Park. Yeah, great job of well, that one jump cut, and he's able to kind of dance his way through that lining linebacker core, which is very good. You've got to Tim Ball and Caden Coppersmith, both very good tackling linebackers. Jeremiah Fenlison is the center here on this offensive line for Champlin Park. Over the ball here, first down and 10. Out of that shotgun, here's the give to Russell from Tilke. Hesitates, breaks one tackle, nowhere to go. He'll be able to get something out of nothing. They're going to give him two yards when it looked like it was going to be a loss. So uh, picking his way, trying to get as much yardage as possible against this uh, stingy centennial defense. Joshua O'Shea, the defensive end, made the tackle. Yeah. For Russell to be able to get those two, like you mentioned, he had to ping pong off of a couple of defenders and uh, still on schedule. Second down eight, Champlin Park from the 45 of Centennial. Rebels five and one. Week seven of the season, we played six, and that snap is on the turf. And Tilke will have to eat it all the way back to the 50-yard line, loss of five. Tonight's not the night to, to go off schedule at all with this a fumble. Snap just a little bit low. Tilke smart to jump on it. You've got Marcus Whiting right there along with uh, Melvin Wallace. Third and 13. Last 10 meetings between these schools, Champlin Park has won six, Centennial has won four. A number of the recent games have been very close. Out of those 10 games, I bet seven or eight of them are one-score games. Third and 13, Tilke 
Again, fumbling the ball a little bit. It's wet here tonight. Here's the toss is going to be incomplete. Off the fingertips of his intended receiver as he tried to find Luke Gilk. And it'll be incomplete. That'll be fourth down here for Champlin Park. That was a good throw. He just uh, went right through the, the hands. And that we mentioned that, that wet ball went right through the hands of, of Tilke on the snap and <laughs> went right through the hands of the, the tight end on the throw. Fourth down, 13, an impressive video board here. Brand new video board here this season for Champlin Park. It is a beauty. And Champlin Park working towards that scoreboard here. Ball right at the 50-yard line. And again, Tilke is the punter, and he's going to drop back. It's going to be a quick kick. And he's going to pooch it, get a lot of distance on that in good air. It'll take a bounce for Centennial as it kind of checked up at the 15 and works its way back to the 19. And we'll see this run-based Centennial offense here for the first time tonight as they're able to stop Champlin Park after they got a couple of first downs. Uh, in the intro, you had mentioned there's there's that beautiful uh, new scoreboard, video board, not even a scoreboard, it's a video board. But most importantly tonight for the Rebels, they've got to start stop either Mav Harpet in between the tackles or Ty Bragoon number two on the outside. Those are, those are the two main threats along with the quarterback. Mav Harper is number 43. They send a man in motion. They'll give it to him. That's Ty Bergoon. They can run him as well, and he tries that right edge. Gets about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Bergoon, three receptions on the season, 409 yards rushing, eight and a half a crack. Dalen Cummings, the quarterback, third-year starter for the Cougars, 23 of 39. He's attempted only 39 passes by comparison, Padani for Anoka last week attempted 34. <laughs> so you can see they are a running-based offense. And uh, you got to like that old-school style. Here's Cummings. They give it on the dive right side. And again, that downhill run got maybe a couple here for Mav Harper. Can that interior of the defense of Champlin Park slow that run down? Isaiah right there to make the tackle. That's something Anoka was unable to do in the game last week in the Pumpkin Bowl we had. Yeah, every time they touch the ball, they seem to get about five to six yards. And this front seven for Champlin Park is really good. We're going to be calling their, the linebackers' names quite a bit tonight. Third and five, Centennial's first possession of the ball game. They try that option on the far side to Burgoon. They had success with that last week, but they take it to the short side of the field. Not a lot of room there. Joseph Walsh, the safety, comes up to make the tackle for Champlin Park. And now Centennial face with a fourth down here inside their own 30-yard line. And smart, they're going to punt. They've got uh, Mav Harper back there again. And with the kicking duties, uh, I, I'm guessing there's probably a soccer match tonight that has Frey's out. Yeah, because here's uh, Harper who is kicking. He kicked off. He will punt here as well. Good pressure. They sent to uh, look like everything but the kitchen sink and two return men. And that'll bounce, take a centennial bounce inside the 40 to the 38. So Mav Harper is kind of uh, the do-it-all guy here. And uh, punting, running, kicking, Champlin Park. This might be a game of field position yeah. where it's not a matter of, you know, you get a couple of first downs, okay, then you pin the next team in deep, and then they have to punt it after maybe not getting a first down, then you get it closer to midfield, and then it just plays it back and forth until somebody is able to break through. Yeah, there's the starters there right there for Champlin Park. Uh, up front, you've got Wright, Lay, uh, Fennelson, Fields, and Ellingson. Uh, those are the movers uh, for the front line. Cole Jepson, or Jerpses, is the tight end, number 88. And Nick Keenan in his sixth season here as a head coach at Champlin Park after having success at Big Lake and being an assistant here. Handoff on the first play from scrimmage here. Champlin Park trying to keep it on the ground. And Arthur Russell will pick up some yardage there. Russell had 114 yards last week in the win against Blaine. A couple of touchdowns. Tilke added 95 yards rushing. So they did get the running game going against Blaine last week. Yeah, impressive. Uh, and, and to be honest, talk about a balance. 175 or 176 and 174 as far as run and to pass. Second down, six to the eye back. Maybe a yard. Centennial's uh, defense did not allow for much of a hole there for the running back. And that'll now bring up third down. That was number four. That's the backup quarterback, Brady Shorenstein, who played and was the starting quarterback a few years back here for Champlin Park. 
He does a lot of things for this uh, team as well. He's just a junior. Played as a freshman at quarterback. Third down, a long three. On the ground, not a lot of room. Stacked up and pushed back. A lot of white shirts there off of that left side on the give to Arthur Russell again. And that'll bring up fourth down. This, right now, this is shaping up to be a defensive struggle. You see from behind there for Centennial, number seven, Aiden Sadowski came in and kind of grabbed him from behind. Sadowski over there, uh, we've called uh, uh, Jack O'Shea or Josh O'Shea a couple of times. And yeah, this is uh, a battle of field positions like you mentioned. Preston Tilke will drop back to punny standing on his 30-yard line. Snaps a good one. A little bit of pressure. It's going to be a high punt. Fair catch is called for, and then stepping away from it, the return man will quick. And Champlain Park will get on that immediately before it starts going in negative territory for them. And the ball will be marked just outside the 30-yard line. Let's take a look at that starting offense for head coach Mike Diggins. 14th season as the head man here at Centennial. He was also the girls' hockey coach. 33 years with the program. Long time. He uh, comes in with a record of 71 and 60. Up front to Alex Johnson. Trenton Campbell center is Alex Larkin on, uh, on the left guard is Sam Wood and Brad Brown. They average about 234 on the line. Very, very active and athletic. Cummings, 429 yards rushing on the season. 371, actually 371, 371 yards rushing, 429 yards passing. Here is the dive on that right side on first down and 10. Across the 35, it's Harper. And uh, that's kind of uh, their offense right there. Gain of five on first down, and they'll take that all night long, second down. Yeah, very impressive with Harper. He just, he never, there's no negative yardage. He falls forward every time for an extra two. Harper, 748 yards rushing, 122 carries, 14 touchdowns. And Bergoon goes in motion, and it is Harper, maybe one. With that jet sweep fake, they hope to get that linebacker moving through, but the defensive line of Champlin Park stuffing that one. And here comes a third down. Well, they're, they're da daring Centennial to throw the ball. They know hey, the conditions aren't great. They're not a great throwing team. We're going to put all ten. <laughs> ten guys in the box. In the box. Yeah. Third down and four. Cummings getting the play from the sideline. One wide receiver there on the right. That's uh, Kellen Binder getting the start at wide receiver. Cummings under center. Bergone goes in motion, and it is going to be Harper. He's going to be shy of the first down. Got out to close to the 40. It'll be fourth down and short. Well, this would be an interesting call. I think they go for it here. They're about it. Well, they're not going to. They are going to play the field. It looked like it was Mav was a little bit closer, but uh, nice job by this defense. This defense has really controlled that line of scrimmage so far for the uh, Rebels. Fourth down. Cougars got out to the 39-yard line. And again, Harper back to punt, standing at his 22-yard line. Rebels sending back a couple of deep men. This will be an end-over-end -end wobbly punt, and that'll angle towards the sideline. And the return man, uh, Giovanni Fan, watches it go out of bounds. And Champlin Park will get it. So basically, <laughs> this has been kind of between the 20s and between the 30s here for the most part, the last couple of possessions. 4.03 left to go in the first quarter on QCTV. This is week seven through week six. Already week seven, the next week's games will be on Thursday for the big schools, primarily because they don't start the playoffs until the next Friday after, or even Thursday, possibly for officiating purposes. Uh, this is you're at the top of the the roller coaster and it's it's going to get going fast pretty soon. First down and ten, no score. Forty one yard line for the Rebels. Tilke batted at the line of scrimmage and knocked away. Incomplete. Getting up there and getting a hand out of the linebacker Timmy Ball. Uh, Tim Ball's the, the leading tackler, and comes in on a blitz. We saw him blitz quite a bit last week against Anoka, and. He's just, uh, he just got his hands up, knocked her down. Champlin Parks, uh, Russell had 114 yards rushing last week. Tilke, 95. Gilk had four receptions. Tucker had a 69-yard touchdown reception last week for Champlin Park, and that went over Blaine. Here's a snap off the arm of Tilke. Picks it up. He's going to scramble for his life. He got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe plus one. 
<laughs> so talk about taking what might have been a 10 15 yard loss getting a yard there. That's the second time that that snap has not uh, connected here for Champlin Park. It'll make it a third down and long. Yeah, thought I saw a flag down, but I, I did not. Thought there was a hold on the far side. We haven't had one yet, nope. knock on wood, third and nine. It's a wet one here tonight. Champlin Park High School. It's gonna rain all night, it sounds like. Upwards of maybe an inch to two. Another one on the turf. Tilkey's going to have to scramble, and he finds a man open, but it's behind him, incomplete. The tight end, Cole Jerpseth. Almost a good improvisation there by the quarterback, Tilkey. It's incomplete, and it's fourth down. Yeah, you, the snaps are a little bit low, but uh, handle, they're being able to handle. I just wonder if the, if the ball is that I think wet. it's a wet ball yeah. for the center. I don't yeah, know if it's yeah, as either. much of a problem for the quarterback because those snaps have been off just a little bit. Yep. But uh, it might be a combination of all that here. And you can see the official there. He is trying his darndest to keep it dry. You know, some guys go with the, with the gloves, some don't. It just depends. Even sometimes in really wet stuff, those gloves don't get the job done either. Fourth down and nine. That snap, bobble, Tilkey's going to have to run it. He's going to scramble, and he's going to stumble his way to the 41. So that, again, a snap that was low. Tough for Tilkey to short hop it, and Centennial is going to get the first break of the game and get a short field here in the quick, uh, technically not a turnover, but a turnover yeah. on downs. And they were running out of time. He was trying to get that snap off and just a little low. And again, you know, there <laughs> that, that will count as yeah. the fifth fumble so and, far. And you can see that Tilkey was not happy. He was trying to rush the snapper to get it off before the play clock ran down. <laughs> and uh, was able to, again, get some positive yardage out of it. At least having Centennial starting outside of the Champlin Park 40-yard line. Best starting field position for either team here tonight. First down and 10 Cougars. Mav Harper right up the gut. Punishing tacklers down to about the 31. Gain of nine. Champlin Park's Joseph Walsh, the safety, comes up to make part of the tackle. But uh, big, big Mav Harper. Only 190, but I tell you what, he runs bigger than that. Big pick up there on first. Yeah, he doesn't seem like he's a 190 back with the way he runs. He's going to carry probably twice as much as anyone else on the field for the uh, Cougars. Second in the yard. Burgoon is also in the backfield. Here is Harper again. Same play right up the middle. And the Champlin Park linebackers uh, get there after a nice pickup. Tackle made by Matthew Heinen. And that's going to be a first down here for Centennial. Yeah, that's their first first down. Running in between the uh, the tackles is something that uh, it's the bread and butter player for Centennial. I have a feeling that if Centennial can play in these kind of conditions every week, they would. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We work under center. They got double tight end most of the time. They run the ball. Here's Cummings, who can run. He bounces it outside. He's going to get positive yardage inside the 25 to the 23. Not that they like it raining, but it just gives them the opportunity, especially when they're playing these teams that are more pass-oriented or they teams that try to be balanced or teams that run the spread. And uh, technically, Champlin Park doesn't run the spread offense with four receivers at all times, but the, they do more passing and rely on that yeah, more in yeah. their offense. Yeah, and now a little tempo as well as they've got a little momentum. Now they've got some tempo. Second and six. Cummings right into the belly of Harper, and this time maybe one. He fights his way. I don't think there was one time in the Anoka game that he was tackled for a no gain or a loss. That's how good the Centennial offensive line was and how good he is is getting positive yardage. Yeah, this 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 defensive line is excellent. You've got uh, uh, Hanson Wright, Joseph, and uh, Burgers up there. Very, very good. Third well, down and five. They got their uh, work cut out for them, both offensive and defensive lines here for both teams. It's going to be a battle on that line of scrimmage, and we have movement on the line of scrimmage. And we'll sort this out here. You know, you had mentioned uh, Matthew Heinen, the linebacker for the Rebels. Comes in 6'1", 210, he's a senior. He's got 11 tackle for losses so far this season. Encroachment on the defense, number 79. Five-yard penalty will result in a first down. 
So it was third and five, so a gift first down here for Centennial. See it right there. Yep. Oh, headbutt too. Contact with the center. And the center stayed. I mean, uh, you know, in, in high school, once you cross, you can't jump back like you can at the NFL. Once you jump and encroach into the neutral zone, it is a penalty. And with 1.20 left to go here in the first quarter, we're going to get another quick whistle here. Are they going to wipe the ball down? Did they not wipe it down? Well, I, th I think this they one, gave it was just a mark. Yeah, but it was a mark issue. Yep. Wasn't marked consistently with where the first down marker was. Ball just outside the 15, 16 yard line here for the Centennial Cougars trying to get on the board first. Coming in with that five and one record. They went eight and three last year, made it to the state tournament to the quarterfinals. Here's a toss over to Burgoon. He gets inside the 15 yard line, marked down. Clock will continue to run, stays in bounds at about the 14. Nice fill by the free safety, Brady Shornstein Stein. Uh, he came up from his free safety position and was able to shut that option down quickly. Centennial right back up to the line. Burgoon and Harper in the backfield. Looks like they're going to line up in the I formation. Split wide left. Brock Burgraff here for the Cougars. Bottom of your screen. Second down. Eight. Burgoon stopped in the backfield. Just did not have a hole. He was trying to find one, but could not find it. And Abdul Batin Janadu, the defensive tackle, 6'2", 145. You see him right there, number 92, was there to make the stop third down. Well, they've got five down linemen and, down linemen and defensive linemen, I should say. And, uh, boy, they are filling nicely right now. Something we did not see last week. Final few seconds here of the first quarter. Centennial going against the wind, which doesn't really matter in their offense run base. As we mentioned, they go out of the shotgun. Here's the draw play. They hand it to Harper. He's got room. He's inside the 10 to the 5 to the end zone. And he pinballs his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Centennial. Wow, that was a good play call there by Centennial. They go out of the shotgun, look pass, and then they go draw inside handoff to Mav Harper, and he's in the end zone. Uh, just tough to bring down. He, he, I don't know if he gets sprayed down with silicone or what, but nobody could grab him once he got past that line of, line of scrimmage. And uh, we saw he's just, he's just a good running back who stays upright and able to get in for his 15th touchdown. Yes, indeed. He had 14 coming in. And 15 now as the point after is up and good here for the Centennial Cougars. Let's take a look at that play one more time. Yeah, look at the down linemen. They, are, they have, uh, the offensive line has moved down and was able just to clear a massive hole. And once uh, Harper's got ahead of steam, very difficult to get past. So that's the end of the first quarter of play. Centennial leading Champlain Park 7-0. Here comes the kickoff here. You can see the uh, drops of rain on our camera lens. And here's a good return by the Cougars. Out across the 40, it's Russell to the 43-yard line. Arthur Russell, some open turf 
And the kicker, Harper, who kicked that one, actually made the tackle. And that's a big return. Gets that ball out near midfield here for Champlin Park as they look to answer now down 7 nothing, beginning the second quarter. Yeah, and they, they need to. This is uh, like their best field position so far as uh, starting, like you had mentioned. Uh, we'll see if they abandon the pass or at least try to, to uh, maybe get some quick tunnel screens. Two wide receivers. Cabez Moore and Borboom split wide right. Under center now. That's an adjustment here for Tilke. And they'll give it to Russell. And he gets maybe a yard. They've been trying to use the shotgun and the pistol and the offset pistol and so forth here. Let's see if they go more with under center with the wet conditions tonight here starting in the second quarter. Well, it can't be any. I mean, you've got five plays that have been broken because of the fact that uh, uh, the, the community, the exchange between the center and the quarterback. Second and nine, Tilke under center again. Wing here on the near side is Gilk. He's going to pass, steps up, pressured. Somebody got an arm on him. Somebody got a high hit on him, reaching for the neck area and the shoulder pad. Did not get enough of it for any kind of a penalty, and he's going to be sacked back at the 40-yard line. This is what we see, what, what Centennial does. They send their linebackers. Their linebackers are kind of spying on Tilkey, who's a good runner. And as soon as he pulls up his arm, you see just the defense collapse on him. Number 55, uh, Luke Metcalf was the one who came up and made contact with Tilke. No penalty on the contact, loss on the play, third down and 13. Back to the shotgun. Some jumping to Centennial cross into the neutral zone, apparently not. Play continues, no flags. And that throw down the far sideline intended for Gabazemore is incomplete. Fourth down. Surprising. I mean, we were right on that line, Jim. <laughs> it looked like somebody was <laughs> in the It looked like three of them were in close. the yeah, they were in the uh, in the neutral zone. So that'll make it fourth down and thirteen here for Champlin Park. Well, another punt. It you know, if they stay on schedule, they're a very good team. I'd love to see Tilke get out on some design runs and maybe a, like a quarterback draw. He'd get him into the flow. Centennial took advantage of a short field. Got the bad snap on the punt previously and started at the 40-yard line. Here's a good oh. snap. Lots of pressure. Tilke gets away with it and gets off a good punt that's going to take a bounce that'll bound out of bounds inside the Centennial 30-yard line at the Cougar 28. And that's where Centennial will take over here. Uh, Tilke was lucky to get that off. There were three Cougars in his face, and he was able to get through. Through. You can see the pressures that, uh, that Centennial can bring not only on the punt, but uh, just uh, throughout with that front seven. Very, very active group. It is damp tonight. It rained pre prior, uh, prior to the game and previous to kickoff. But right now, there's not much coming down at all. Looking at the lights, if anything, it's a very light mist. Still some umbrellas up here on the near sideline in the grandstand. If you're joining us here on QCTV and QCTV.org, you plan to be here, but <laughs> saw that TV was here and you're back enjoying it at home. Welcome. First down and 10 for Centennial. They've got a touchdown lead here, 7-0. Ranked sixth in the state. Eden Prairie's number one in Class 6A. From the 28-yard line, guess who? Harper stood up, got back to the line of scrimmage. And that might be it, and that's going to be the challenge. That's the thing that Champlin Park needs to do in the interior of their defense is to slow down that play. That's the bread and butter of Centennial, isn't it, Jim? It, it is, and uh, he, Harper was still able to get, but great job by Tim Ball and uh, Coppersmith to get in, get in there. Second down and nine, gain of less than a yard, but we'll uh, round it up. Second down and nine, Cummings, little play action. Here's his throw near side. It is caught with Ty Burgoon, and Burgoon down the near sideline to the 30, 25. That pass was caught kind of out on the flat, and then Burgoon turned it upfield. And gets himself a first down and a big pickup here for the Cougars. Well, Champlin Park had had their defense was saying, "Go ahead, throw it," and uh, they were able to. And it's going to be though it's coming back, oh, holding on Centennial. The offense, number 86, 10 yards from the spot of the foul will still result in a first down. Wide receiver Kalen Binder got caught with a hold there, and it negates an almost 40-yard pickup. 
there for the Centennial Cougars. Spot of the foul, so they are going to get a first down out of it. And uh, it'll be in Champlin Park territory at the Rebel 48-yard line. So that's a gain of 30 yards. Right, and they yeah. still gain 30 yep. on that. First down and 10. 48-yard line. Cummings is the quarterback. Looks over to that Centennial sideline. And he'll keep. And not a lot of room there. He's going to be stacked up and pulled back. Champlin Park's Tyler Hansen was the one who wrapped him up. It'll be second down. Well, I think what's impressive is the height of that defensive line. 6'4", 6'2", 6'3", 6'3", all very tall and wide bodies up mm -hmm. front. Very tough to get past. Yeah, and especially also if you're a passing yeah. team. Yep. Get your hands up there if you're 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 so second down and 10. No gain on that play for Cummings. The center is number 56, Alex Larkin. He's over center. Actually, it looks like they've got 64 there in center now for Centennial. They're going to go to Burgoon on a pitch play. He's got a first down and more. Far sideline inside the 35, 33-yard line. And a first down. And now they're right about to where that pass play would have been. If not for the holding calls, they get a first down. Inside the 35, 33 of Champlin Park and Centennials moving the sticks and the ball. Yeah, a little bit of a reversed option play as they started to the to the near side and went to the far side and once a, and uh, no containment over there good play call double wing here for Cummings everybody in tight otherwise receiver top of your screen not a lot of room there and uh, it looked like the quarterback Cummings wanted to pull that out of Harper's belly but he holds on to it no gain on the play he's down right at the line of scrimmage uh, again great tackling this this front line is just good at tackling again we're seeing in Janita, Jinadu, sorry, with another good tackle. No gain. Yeah, Benson Hartman is now at center here for Centennial. We had Alex Larkin, the senior, in as the starter. Second down 10. Again, a jump. This one will warrant a flag. Was there movement on the offensive side or is it defense? And the signal, preliminary signal, is encroachment defense. Okay, here's Matt Larson. Matt Olson. So the uh, penalty here against Champlin Park. We've had a couple. That's a second encroachment penalty on them here tonight. Gain of five, second and five. Well, this again is starting out to be that methodical, you know, five yards, three yards drive uh, with a sprinkled with a 20-yard gain. Brock Burgraff again, top of your screen. He's split wide on the short side of the field from the far hash mark. Burgoon and Harper in the backfield for Cummings on second down and five. And it is Harper. And he's taking on linebackers and tacklers. And he drags a Champlin Park tackler down to the 20-yard line, making the tackle. But after being dragged a yard or two, Jalen Graham with the strong run by Mav Harper, first down. Yeah, Mav Harper, he's <laughs> just a, a, a load. And we saw a couple of turnovers last week with the exchange between yes. Harper and Cummings. So far they've, they've cleaned that up. And they, they were those quick dives. Yes. Yeah, you have, a, you have very little time, a very small window on those dive plays to get it into your back. And there's another one that's inside the 15 down to about the 12-yard line. And uh, that time... Uh, not to Harper for Champlin Park. They went to uh, Deshaun, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Marcus Whitting, who had a touchdown run last week against Anoka. Had uh, three carries, 32 yards, and a touchdown, averaging over uh, 10 yards a carry. And uh, Whiting there picked up five, almost six. We'll give him six, second down and four. Cummings, again Whiting. This dive, he tumbles and falls forward for maybe a yard and a half. Third down coming up for Centennial. This is a big stop, big situation here. Obviously, four down territory or maybe a field goal attempt for Centennial if they don't convert here on third down. Yeah, and Whiting in there, he's the big back. He's 6'1", 220. So you've got Mav Harper who runs like he's 220. and He doesn't Whiting. look much 
bigger than no, Harper, really, when you look no, at it. Nope. I mean, a couple inches taller. But uh, they're the two backs in there. So you got, you know, a big, big pair of running backs in there, big offensive line. This is smash mouth here for Centennial. Third down, four, and it's Cummings with the keep, with a straight arm to the goal line. Touchdown, Centennial. 13-yard run on the quarterback keep, and it's Cummings into the end zone. What a great disguise. Harper, I, I was fooled. I thought Harper had the ball. He pulls it out of the stomach. He's got Whiting on the, the side, and he just takes it right in between, right off tackle. As, uh, he's trying to get some support. Outstanding job by Centennial. Cummings to hold. Keaton Frace is doing the place kicking here tonight. He has been very good on the point afters. He's only missed one. This one looked like somebody got a piece <laughs> of it, and he still powered it through. It looked like it either went through somebody's arms or somebody actually touched it. Yeah. But uh, Keaton Frace now 24 of 25 in the point afters as he makes it 14 nothing Centennial. Yeah, we saw last week one blocked. And but uh, Frace, a soccer player by day and a place kicker by night. They have night soccer games, don't oh, they? Oh, they do. You they right. do. Right. Yes. No, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> it was very, very Cape Crusader, Batman-like. Bruce Wayne during the day, Batman <laughs> at night with 5.14 left to go. Rather quick first half here at uh, Champlin Park. Having a cancer fundraiser here tonight. You may notice some of the pink leggings and stockings and the sleeves that Champlin Park is wearing here tonight. We can talk more about that. A young man who is a student here at Champlin Park High School battling cancer, and they're doing fundraisers uh, here tonight in week number seven as Harper will boot it away. There to return, Russell stumbles a little bit. Russell to the middle of the field. Can he break that tackle? He does, somehow breaks another one. Jukes his way back to the near side. Boy, is he slippery, still going. Boy, is he fun to watch. And he's gonna eventually make his way to the 33-yard line. Probably ran about a combined 45 yards to <laughs> get a return of uh, 10 there, but uh, still exciting, trying to get any positive yardage, trying to set up good field position for his Champlain Park Rebels and medium field position here to start out across the 30 to the 32. You can see easily why he's on kick return and he's got 500 yards of uh, yeah. uh, yards on the ground. He averages 5.4 yards a carry, five rushing touchdowns to go with 12 receptions, one interception, and he's their return man on special teams, the 5'9 senior. Arthur Russell for Champlin Park. Here's Tilke, the quarterback. Is he going to look to Russell? No, he's going to look to the far side, and that's going to be incomplete. Again, being pressured, the intended receiver, Luke Gilk. He went down to try and grab it, but it hits the turf, second and 10. Yeah, Gilk, it looked like that uh, was a catchable ball. I don't know if, uh, if, if weather had anything to do with it or the fact that uh, he had somebody draped on his back, but it looked like a catchable ball. Nice throw by Tilke. Tilke came in, 60.7% completion. Just over 1,000 yards, 10.57, eight touchdowns, four interceptions. Tall quarterback, and again, just a junior, six foot four, 190. Also has 417 yards rushing. So he has compiled some rushing numbers as well. It's Russell, oh, and he's hit. He got through the first line of defense, and then he got into the second level, and he got planted by the free safety who read that play, Owen Ringen. Shoulder pad to shoulder pad right there. Still a pickup out to the 35-yard line, third down. Impressive how he popped up like that. Ringer had an interception last week, and this one, just good solid tackle, good football. Six, 35-yard line for Champlin Park. Trying to get something going on offense. A couple of first downs. On their opening drive, and this snap is going to sneak past Tilke all the way back to his 20. He picks it up clean. He's going to throw it desperately to the far side and just throw it out, out of bounds. I don't think that's going to be grounding. There were receivers in the vicinity. He was outside the pocket running for his life. Yeah. It'll bring up a fourth down. He, he is good on the run, but when he's 
running, as you said, for his life, difficult to be oh. able to, to, to pinpoint anyone. He got to pass the line of scrimmage. That was the, the key to making sure that it did not uh, count as an intentional grounding. 4.03 left to go in this first half. And uh, fourth down and six. Good pressure by Centennial, but of course, the key on that was the, the yeah. snap that snuck past Tilke, and that has been an issue tonight here for the Champlain Park Rebels. Here's Tilke's punt, end over end. Will they get some release on this? Looked like he was going to check up and either stop right there or go backwards. So the Rebels' Gilk will play it smartly, grab it there. But again, battle of field position, Centennial will uh, have it just outside their 40, the 45-yard line, first and 10. They have uh, time to work here with 3.57 left to go second quarter. And both teams have three timeouts remaining, and Centennial will get the ball to start the second half. They will. And Cummings uh, has only had three rushing attempts. He's, he's initiated a couple of options, but uh, he's kind of the X factor. Once yeah. they kind of zero in on either uh, uh, Harper or Burgoon, he, you'll see uh, Cummings really start to come to the forefront. He's rushing. kind of the surprise guy yeah. in the offense, yep. you know, that third option that all of a sudden they don't oh. expect him to run, and then he does, and then he straight arms guys, and he goes in from 15 yards and a score. As uh, there's Harper, and he got hit, gain of about a yard. Well, he, he's getting, he's <laughs> he's making his uh, his hay tonight. That uh, That's the second or third hard yeah. takedown of him. Tell you what, the front of this Champlain Park defense, they hit, they are physical. Defensive tackle in there is at 71. Ashton Tucker, 245, six foot one. Second down and nine. And this is going to get whistled down. We'll get a timeout Centennial. Actually, the, the guy I was looking at was 79. Defensive tackle, nose tackle, Isaiah Wright, 280, six foot two. He's in there on the center. And uh, he's the one that can really mess up that play for Mav Harper. He has not had the kind of opening and the kind of success on first down that he had last week in the pumpkin bowl. But uh, still, that being said, Centennial leads 14-0 as they take their first of their three timeouts. Yeah, and, and Mav Harper did get loose for one 17-yard touchdown run. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been tough sledding in between there. You talked about Isaiah Wright. Isaiah Wright is uh, not only the, the starting nose tackle, but the left tackle as well. He's uh, got double duty. Uh, quite a few of these down linemen have Line, uh, you know, are playing both sides of the ball, which uh, when you're in this kind of a game, it's difficult to to uh, keep the energy and the and the uh, uh, work ethic up when you're constantly battling somebody. And of course, they're using five down linemen here against the Centennial running offense. Second down and nine. Rebels uh, need a stop here. Rolling, stopping, planning, throwing is Cummings and catching that ball is Burgoon. Did he come down? In, no, he's out of bounds. Almost came down. Of course, in high school, you need just the one foot. But the fact that he even made that catch was outstanding play by Burgoon, but it's incomplete. What's impressive is, you know, you talked, you've only got 39 passes coming into this game by Cummings. Cummings has, every time he's throwing, it's there. That, another nice pass on a wheel route for Burgoon. Third and nine. Double tight end here on the near side. Rolling is Cummings again. Same side of that field. Scrambling, being chased, and he's going to be tackled. He got back to the original line of scrimmage. Chasing him was uh, Michael Brugers, the defensive end. And then Cummings went down, and I think the Centennial sideline thought that that was late. And it appeared that maybe it was. Same thing with their fans on that far sideline, but no flag down. And the ball at the 44-yard line. And the Champlain Park defense, mission accomplished. Yeah. They get a stop. Absolutely. And good coverage downfield. And once he pulls it down and gets past that line of scrimmage, that is a runner. And he's not protected as much. Harper adjusts to a high snap and gets off a nice high punt. And fair catch called for and then fumbled by the return man fan. And Centennial says they have it. I haven't seen a signal yet of you. 
Even though it was fair no, no, catch called nope. for, he touched it, he muffed it. It's just a matter of who came up with it. Centennial says they had it. No, they're going to say Champlin Park ball. See, let's take a look at the replay. Clearly, and it looked like Fan came up with it then. Yeah, referees didn't necessarily move to where where, where the uh, the punt was, so it'd be uh, difficult to see it when you're 20 yards away. Yeah, break there for Champlin Park, almost uh, giving it back to Centennial inside the 30-yard line. Rebels have 2.15 left to work here in the first half. Down by two scores, 14-0. Tilke snap, rolling. Not much rain falling right now as he throws it to that far side on that out pattern. It's going to be caught, Boar boom. And that'll bring up second down. Yeah, Boar boom. Nice catch on that. I like it when they move Telke out. He's got oh, an option to run. Must have been incomplete. They're bringing oh, it back okay. to the line of scrimmage. Looked like it, he caught it, but when he went down to the turf, it, may, it must have come loose. So second down and 10. Well, we've only seen one completion so far, and that was that second play of the game. 14-yard pickup to uh, Gamazemore. Russell in the backfield here with Tilke. Second and 10. Steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to scramble. 25-30. Flag goes down from the backfield. Out of bounds. Shy of the marker, it appeared. And now we'll have to sort this out. It's going to be holding Champlin Park. So this is coming back. Yeah, it looks like uh, I think it was number 72. We'll find out from Mr. Olson. I think Ellingson had it. Holding on the offense. Number 74, nope. 10 yards from the previous spot, still second down. That'll move them back 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Wrong Sir. direction here for Champlin Park. And now, because they've gotten the wrong direction here inside the 20 to the 15, you've got to really hold on to the ball here. Yeah, and, and right now it's also about, you know, do you run it and, and make sure that uh, you can burn some timeouts? for uh, Centennial. A couple of first downs here certainly would be timely, but it's second down and 20. Tilke's going to throw on second down across the middle, and the intended receiver went up for the ball. Champlin Park calling for the flag on pass interference. The intended receiver was Matthew Berge, but uh, was over his head. I don't think he made contact with it. It's, inter it's uh, incomplete. I don't know if they read that. It, there was definitely contact, and it looked like he changed positions <laughs> with the, you know, as he went up, he got twisted. So do they no rule call. in that instance that it's uncatchable? uncatchable. It was it was high, and I don't know if without the interference that ball is completed or not. It's yeah. hard to tell. Berger, the intended receiver, third down and twenty. Tilke. Getting protection from Russell, goes deep near sideline. It's caught, was he inbounds? No, oh. out of bounds. Caught by Gabazemore. Another one here, number two on the other side. Or number two is Burgoon, who made a great catch, but was out of bounds. Same thing here with Champlin Park's number two, yeah, Jaden Gabazemore. Yeah, his right foot landed out of bounds, just, on, just out of bounds, but. Well, here's fourth down now, and because of that holding call, it's fourth down and 20 back at the 15. And the quarterback, Preston Tilke, will drop back and do the punting at the goal line. So have to be sure here about the snap. Centennial is going to get good field position here, it appears. There is the snap back. Tilke pressure, and it's going to kind of be off the side of his foot and go out of bounds, and the Cougars will get outstanding field position but a lot of pressure there on the uh, the long snapper Ashton Kapitsky who is the uh, snapper the junior got that snap back to Tilke but I tell you what Centennial is right in on him on the pressure yeah the wind right now is picked up too it is blowing uh, kind of across it's coming from the north side coming down so the far the uh, the, the far uh, end zone and coming blowing it back and the rain has picked up so yes the rain has come back here Game time temperature was 50, 51 degrees. It's now 50, and you see the radar. That's a big <laughs> line of rain. It's going to be a wet one tomorrow for the Friday games. First down, 10. 
Cummings from the 30. Golden opportunity here for Centennial. He keeps the ball, and he's going to be tackled. Forward progress maybe to the 29 at best here for Centennial. They, they know they don't have to score here because they do get the ball back here to start the second half. They're up 14 nothing. Yeah, Mav Harper, he had to wrestle that ball away from Mav yeah. Harper first and then had to wrestle a couple of, uh, of Rebels. Second down and nine. That's the quarterback's prerogative. I think he makes the read on kind of that lead or read option as uh, this time it is Harper down to the 27-yard line, third down. And Centennial has uh, two of their three timeouts here. So they have two remaining. And it looks like they're content here just to run their offense and see what happens. 50 seconds left to go in the first half. And they'll be more than happy to go into the break up 14-0 and getting the kickoff to start the second half. And now Centennial will call a timeout. So timeout Cougars, 14-0, they lead it. I think what's impressive is uh, uh, both the passes that we've seen uh, with the wind and the accuracy of both these quarterbacks is, uh, is uh, really pretty impressive for high school football. Let's take a look at the standings. These teams, of course, in the uh, Metro District, North Sub District. And Centennial and Maple Grove right there at 5 and 1. Well, both teams, uh, their one loss, Maple Grove to Champlain Park, and then Centennial to Maple Grove. Uh, both teams, these the, both these teams will be making some noise in the playoffs, Jim. I mean, the, the, their defense is solid. They've got a strong running game. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what's called for yeah. when you get into uh, late October, November. And what's fun about uh, the playoffs is you put 32 teams in there and you mix them up. Yep. And uh, last year, uh, Champlain Park played Moundsview, lost to them 17-7 to in the first round. Centennial defeated Park. Edina then lost to eventual runner-up Rosemont in the state quarterfinals. Third down, seven. Rain picking up. Cummings mm. out. Burgoon. Nice little setup. He's to the 20, and he gets tackled after the first down. But a, a nice little dump off pass screen there set up by the Centennial offense. And uh, Champlain Park's uh, Matthew Heinen chased him down. It is a first down, 25 seconds left to go. Ball inside the 20 at the 18. Yeah, that's a touchdown saving tackle by Heinen because that was well set up. First down and 10, you can hear the rain picking up uh, in our field microphones. And with 14 seconds left, we get a whistle. And not sure if Centennial, did they use a timeout? The referee's going to his microphone. There was a clock issue. They want to put more time on the clock, apparently. 22 <laughs> seconds now on the clock. 2-2. Two, two. See if Centennial takes a shot at the end zone. They keep it on the ground. I predict they'll keep it on the ground here with Harper with the rain starting to pick up. Yeah, I, I think I see an option. First down, 10. Cummings. Nope. He throws. Three-step drop. Near side to the end zone. Burgoon diving. He got it. Touchdown. Oh my. 17 yards, touchdown Centennial with three seconds left in the first half. We're going to start calling the uh, uh, Coach uh, Diggins, Air Diggins, as he's <laughs> throwing five times in the last two drives. Burgoon to uh, the recipient of two uh, completions. That one, 18 yards and a beautiful pass and even better catch. I almost and came close to predicting a pass there. I said, let's see if they pass. And I go, no, they're going to run it. And that's exactly what they did. They passed the ball. Here comes Frase in for the point after. And Frase's kick is up and uh, good again. So Centennial, three touchdowns in this first half. Three seconds left. You can see the rain coming down. 21-0. Yeah, who'd have thought that uh, you'd have a touchdown pass uh, in a weather game like this. But uh, nice job. And good, good call. surprise. Yeah, good it, call, it good was, pass, yeah. and a good catch by Burgoon. Yep, absolutely. Burgoon, uh, three receptions on the season. That's his first touchdown reception. They had just one touchdown reception on the season, and that was a Kellen Binder. So that's the second uh, touchdown pass 
of the season for Centennial quarterback uh, Cummings. And Cummings coming in uh, total here, 23 of 39, 429 yards passing, one touchdown, one interception. He now has two touchdown passes on the season. He, he does. You know, the one person we haven't seen, we haven't seen number 19, Josh Lee, don't uh, out in the, in the last couple of drives for Centennial. Yeah, he's a big part of the yep. team's offense last week against Anoka in the win over the Anoka Tornadoes in the Pumpkin Bowl annual event. Here's the Harper kick, little squib. Back to the 20, return man, Shorenstein picks it up, and he'll zigzag his way, and that is the end of the first half. So that kickoff ends the first half for us here tonight at Champlain Park High School, first half. The Cougars running offense, getting it done. We get close to Halloween and close to the playoffs. It's week seven. Cougars 21, Rebels nothing here on QCTV Sports. We are here today with Joe McKenzie with Cars for Neighbors. And Joe, can you tell us some more about the history of Cars for Neighbors for our viewers out there? Absolutely. Uh, Cars for Neighbors was founded 22 years ago in Anoka County by four Anoka County residents, residents that were working I in, the, in the community, uh, in the churches, in the social services, as the business community. They recognized that getting from point A to B in a car mm -hmm. was, that's how with liver cancer two years ago. He is battling every day. He's out here battling like rebels do. Everyone in the crowd and in the team, raise your orange flags for Max one time. Let's go. Show your support. All right, buddy. Max is our game day captain, so he's got to go back with the team. We appreciate you. Anything you guys are willing to do, we are all going to donate on behalf of Max. We love you, buddy. All right, thank you so much. Did you know that QCTV has a YouTube channel? That's right, we're growing and we want you to grow with us. Hey, so please consider subscribing to QCTV on YouTube. Movie reviews, we got you covered. Video games, sports, yep, it's all there. Keep up with QCTV's biggest shows, segments, and important news updates on QCTV's YouTube channel. If you could, do us a favor. Drop a like and subscribe, and we see you, and we will see you over on YouTube. <laughs> Game Sharks, a show about video games, has a brand new episode on QCTV. Hey, in this episode, we're chatting about Bethesda's Starfield. This space RPG has plunged the gaming world into warp speed, and we have some thoughts. Join Jimmy and myself as we share our hot takes each month on Game Sharks. Hey, be sure to subscribe to QCTV's YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you out there in the galaxy. We are here today with Joe McKenzie with Cars for Neighbors. And Joe, can you tell us some more about the history of Cars for Neighbors for our viewers out there? Absolutely. 
Uh, Carson Abrams was founded 22 years ago in Anoka County by four Anoka County residents, residents that were working I in, the, in the community, uh, in the churches, in the social services, as the business community. They recognized that getting from point A to B in a car mm -hmm. was, that's how people were able to move forward in their lives. So they knew the importance of finding a, a, a nonprofit that could help repair vehicles for people that couldn't afford their, to repair their vehicles. Gotcha. And is a nonprofit like Cars for Neighbors, is that still essential today as much as it was in the year 2000? Absolutely. 93% of people in Minnesota use a personal vehicle to get from point A to B every day. That's 93%. That's quite so a lot when of you re Yeah, when you realize you have to get to work or take your elders to appointments or your children, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Cars for Neighbors is as essential today as it was founded 22 years ago. Speaking of that help, what sort of impact does Cars for Neighbors have, have on the Anoka County family? I speak all over Anoka County and I break it down this way. A car repair is our daily activity, but the outcome of that repair is economic opportunity, mm -hmm. economic mobility, and economic empowerment. That person now can make decisions for themselves. And so we break it down to that simple approach. And when you start to think about it, that's what those repairs do. Mm -hmm. Of course, because I mean, yes, we have a wonderful, you know, bus and train system here, but you know, the buses run on a certain time and you know, emergencies don't happen on a time schedule. So really having that car is, is essential. And it's, it's a wonderful the work that Cars for Neighbors does. And uh, so those repairs that you're making, what are you seeing in regards to vehicle repair? I mean, the technology is always changing. Something's always kind of breaking. What kind of goes into fixing those cars and getting people moving around town? Well, first and foremost, we take a safety approach. We want to make sure everybody is moving around in safe vehicles, you know, from, from good brakes to good tires to mm -hmm. good suspension with our car care partner in Ham Lake, Meineke. We, we focus on the, the safety aspects of it because we all share the roads. But, you know, six months out of the year, it seems that those roads that we have are winter. And we got to make sure that we can all move, a, move about safely. But it, that also just keeps, that gives people the confidence to be able to keep a job, look for a job, mm -hmm. uh, enroll their children into activities, or be able to volunteer for their elders. Uh, that's why it's so important to, to approach it with safety and just uh, a, a safe running vehicle. Of course. And if somebody's watching this program and they say, well, gosh, I could I could really use some help, or maybe somebody is looking for ways that uh, they can help, where can they get some more information? Just simply go to carsforneighbors.org. Everything up there you need to know in, in regards to our services and some of our guidelines, but also share that with people you know in your communities, in your faith organizations, in your families. It's important that we reach all four corners of Anoka County mm -hmm. with this type of service because together, we can rally, we can keep everybody moving forward in their lives safely and just uh, you know, doing what they're supposed to do in their lives in, in regards to their work and their families and just uh, being part of that community. Fantastic. Joe, thank you so much for coming into our studio and telling us all about that. What's, what, what's that website one more time? That is carsforneighbors.org. All righty, you heard it here at carsforneighbors.org. And if you'd like to help out or maybe you need some help yourself, make sure you check it out. He gets it. To the 30, to the 10, in the Cleave, and a touchdown for Andrew. Oh, well, it's a wheel route coming out of the backfield. Linebackers late on getting there, and uh, actually had to get one on one coverage. Good touch, good pass, good touchdown, and in the house again. A beautiful pass this time. Maynard to Iafe and throwing the receiver and open down. Toe drag, swag, and a touchdown. Bingo! Come join the American Legion Anoka Post for two nights of spooky bingo fun on the 16th and the 23rd. Wear costumes, win prizes, doors open at 5.30 p.m. and seats fill fast. Halloween buttons and mugs will also be available to buy and food donations to ACBC Food Shelf are welcome. You can't miss out on this long-standing Anoka Halloween tradition. Be right there. Wait. Use the shovel and bucket of water, remember? Drown, stir, drown, feel. 
Then make sure it's cool. Where'd you learn that? Smokybear.com. Brushed up on some tips before we left. Don't want to start a wildfire, right? <laughs> Only you can prevent wildfires. to leave my baby in the hospital NICU. If we come together, we can help every mom and baby be healthy and strong. Joy March for Babies, a mother of a movement. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. you got it. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Young team, and we, we have a couple seniors. Last year, we lost, I think, five seniors, and they were pretty strong at the top of our team. Uh, this year, we also have a lot of strong seniors at the top of our team, but we've also got a lot of freshmen and sophomores playing on our varsity, which is really good to get the youngins in there. Of course, we said as well, we lost a lot of seniors, but overall, I think we're looking really good. We're having a good season so far. And we're hoping to one of the things, I suppose there are other sports like this too, but you can lose your individual match and yet the team wins or vice versa. And that dynamic is just tricky because you might feel good about the way you played and you won and yet the team lost. So overall, it kind of not feeling different than some team sports. Um, and the individual aspect, when you're playing singles and you're just depending on yourself out there, you get you know teammates cheering you on, but it is, it is mostly yourself out there. Um, the other thing that's a little different about tennis is um, there's seven matches going on at once and I am coaching all seven at the same time. So it can very easily be that I, I miss half an hour of a match because I'm focused on the other matches. So, you know, they don't get that constant attention that they might in a different sport. It's pretty unique because we're all kind of playing for our team, but we're individually doing that. So we're all kind of battling at the same time for each other by ourselves. Yeah, it's like you are just doing your doubles corner on your court, playing your own match, but then like you always have in the back of your mind like you're playing for the team. And I'd say we all try to kind of cheer for each other as well, so it feels like we're all playing together at once. Yeah, they can play a good chunk of their match and not have me see them play. Um, the hardest part is if you're you can only coach on a changeover. So I, I can be watching and thinking, oh, these kids are getting ready to switch sides, but then the game takes forever and you end up standing in a spot for longer than you intended to and, and might miss some other key points in other matches. We are, are looking to finish as high as we can in each place. I think we should be, you know, towards the top of the conference and kind of middle of the road to the upper half of the section. Um, and you know, if we can squeak out some close victories, we will try to get up as high as we can.
I didn't ask to be thrown in the streets with nowhere to go, but I did ask for help and Covenant House was there for me. One in 10 young adults will experience a form of homelessness this year. For these kids who didn't ask to be put in this unthinkable situation, Covenant House is there, providing hot meals, a safe place to sleep, medical care, and love. They just really genuinely just wanted to help me succeed and I'm succeeding. To learn more, go to safeplacetosleep.org today. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, we see champions everywhere we look. In every sport, on every court, we're building a foundation to ensure all athletes are safe, supported, and strengthened. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, ending abuse is not just our job. It's our promise. When a crisis hits, close to home and across the globe, nonprofits are on the front lines ready to serve. Healing, nurturing, rescuing, protecting, inspiring. The work of philanthropic organizations has never been more important. And it's donors and volunteers like you who make all this possible. Thank you, the Nonprofit Alliance. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. I'm Naheem Hines, proud supporter of the Muscular Dystrophy Association. My mom has muscular dystrophy, and the MDA helps her and kids like my buddy Ethan. My name is Ethan, and I'm 12 years old. Thanks to the Muscular Dystrophy Association and people like you, I have more hope than ever before. And MDA funds over 150 care centers for kids like me. For over 70 years, MDA has been transforming the lives of people living with muscular dystrophy, ALS, and related neuromuscular diseases. Learn more at MDA.org today. Kids across America are going to school hungry. Millions of kids every day. Hungry kids get sick more often and can struggle in school. It can be harder for them to focus and learn. But one simple thing can help change all of this for a hungry child in America. Good healthy food and the energy it brings. With help from caring people across America, no Kid Hungry is providing healthy meals and hope to hungry kids so they can build better futures. We want to ensure that all of our kids have healthy meals every day. Thank you. Thank you for helping feed our kids. To learn more about ending child hunger in America, go to helpnokidhungry.org today. Attacks against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are on the rise. My simple solution to the problem was remove people from the scene and help them feel safer. In terms of the hate crimes, I think there is so much more work to be done. We really need to come together and tackle this issue as a community.
death of George Floyd, who died in police custody Monday night. Turning my pain into purpose is pretty much what I have done to start this foundation. It's going to take more than just us, you know, as a foundation. It's going to take the community, the world, to help us make a change because it, it just can't be us. We are getting ready for the second half. Rain picked up during the halftime. In fact, just before halftime, the rain started coming down. You can see it in the lights and the camera here. It's going to be a wet one. Not quite the monsoons that were here two weeks ago, from what I understand. But uh, it is going to be wet, and it's been a factor here so far in the first half. Taking a look at the uh, scoring plays, we'll get a recap of that uh, first half. The Centennial offense, they're down the hill running game. Based on the run, uh, throwing only when they when they want to, not when they have to, has been outstanding. As we take a look at that uh, game summary of that first half, first quarter, first of all, and uh, Jim, you saw Centennial get the ball, and they they went to their big back Harper. Yeah, they may have Harper in for a 17-yard touchdown. He's got 13 carries, 58 yards, and uh, his 15th touchdown of the season. He opened the the floodgates as they got into the late in the first quarter. Yep, that made it 7 nothing, and then uh, here's the quarterback Cummings. Keeper, straight arm to the goal line, touchdown. Yeah, Cummings 5 for 20. More impressively, his passing. Yep, this got, was late in the quarter, Jim, late in the half, and, you know, do they run, do they pass, and a pass, and then they convert. Yes, absolutely. 18-yard touchdown to uh, uh, Burgoon. He's got two reception for 42 yards, and you can see the water running off of the uh, goal post. Hey, total yards for Centennial, 173 yards, 116 on the ground, 57 through the air, surprisingly 57 through the air, three completions. And, and for Champlain Park, uh, their biggest play was a 14-yard gain uh, in to get, get that first down on the second play of uh, their of the game. And, uh, after that, it's uh, kind of uh, been stuck in neutral as they've got 11 additional yards, 25 total yards so far, and uh, seven uh, fumbles, most of them coming on a uh, it, on the exchange between the center and the quarterback. None recovered. They've been able to recover everyone and actually turn some into some positive yardage. Much needed rain coming down, but certainly that is not going to help the uh, case here for the Champlain Park Rebels down by three scores, and they're going to have to go on defense to start out here. They need to uh, find a way to get on the board. Maybe that's a turnover. And Centennial has taken pretty good care of the ball here despite the wet condition that hasn't been the case for Champlin Park. They've had some uh, some oopsies on some of the fumbles. They've yep. had some, uh, some, some snaps that have gotten away and uh, some balls that uh, were not controlled. And uh, they did have one, uh, one play that uh, Centennial took advantage of, uh, but otherwise that has hurt them in their offense here tonight. Yeah, Telke. Uh, not a, statistically not a great night. He's been running for his life most of the after or most of the evening. He's got four carries, 11, negative 11 yards, which is very uncharacteristic. Came in with uh, well over 400 yards of, of rushing offense. So uh, Champlin Park will kick off, and uh, Centennial will get it here with that 21 nothing lead. With the rain coming down, you can hear it in our uh, field microphones. Jim and I are high and dry here in the press box. Not, of course, rubbing that in by any <laughs> means, just saying, yes. you know, just giving people the uh, idea where we're setting the stage, as we do as broadcasters. Yeah. You paint the picture. <laughs> and uh, here is the Champlain Park kickoff, doing the kicking off and booming it. And it'll be picked up here by Centennial on the return. 30, 35, across the 35-yard line. And they'll have decent starting field position here at the uh, 36 here for the uh, Cougars. Centennial on the coverage and on the uh, return was Brock Burgraff. First down and 10. Yeah, Brock, Bar Brock Burgraff, big part of the, this offense at times, kind of a wing back. He, we've seen him play uh, out wide as a receiver today with uh, missing uh, Josh Lee. Rain coming down. First play of the second half here for Cummings. And it's Harper. 
Four or five yards and a cloud of uh, rubber pellets. <laughs> Gain of three. It'll be second down and a seven. Well, uh, the recipe is not going to change for Centennial. They're going to stay doing what they do well at. In this in this conditions, it's uh, it's running the football. And, and Mav Harper, who had 13 carries, uh, basically doubling the rest of uh, the ball carriers. We have a Champlin Park player slow to get up. And uh, that uh, is Joseph John. Walsh, yep. who is the uh, safety. He's trying to work out a kink here a little bit on that left leg. And he's able to walk off under his own power. No matter if he'll be able to return here or not. Burgoon with five for 19 so far today. Yep, he's been uh, he's been one of their guys, one of their weapons. It's not just Mav Harper. Yeah, certainly in the Centennial offense, he is certainly uh, the focus and what he can do with the running game up the middle really softens the defense here on second down and seven. This is Cummings, who fakes it to Harper, pulls it out of his belly. On that little read option as he reads the play, and he's going to be shy of the first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five up to the 45-yard line. Well, when Harper gets the ball as much as he do he does, you know, those defensive linemen really key on that. We've, they've got a defensive lineman down for Champlin Park right now. Berg uh, Cummings just able to go to, you know, one spot over and uh, able to hit that hole as uh, – Mav Harper gets a lot of attention. Kind of mentioned how close this series has been. Again, they have not played. Uh, Centennial and Champlain Park were in different sub-districts here the last couple of years. And then with the redistricting, uh, reorganization, they are back in, as well as many of the other schools. And it's, uh, it's got so much more of a good old-fashioned old Northwest Suburban Conference look with uh, St. Michael Albertville thrown in there as well. But uh, back in 2020, Champlain Park won 38-21. Then the year before that, it was Centennial, 21-20. Then the year before that, 24-21 Champlain Park. Then 28-21 Centennial. Then 7-0 Champlain Park. 25-21 Champlain Park. 22-21 Centennial. And then a 35-12 Centennial win in 2013. That was uh, probably the largest, and I think it is the largest uh, margin of victory in the last 10. They last played in the playoffs in 2012. That was 35 to 27 Champlain Park. So they've had a lot of close games and it's been back and forth in this series. And uh, coming into tonight, we really had the anticipation that it'd be a close game, but I don't know how much the conditions factor yeah. in here yep. tonight because obviously Champlain Park wants to throw the ball a little more of a wide open offense and that certainly affects them. They like to be based out of the shotgun Meanwhile, under center, Cummings running the ball downhill. I mean, it just kind of plays into the conditions that we're having and seeing here tonight with the rain as the uh, defensive lineman who was a little dinged up, he'll be heading to the sideline. And that's Isaiah Wright, yeah. a man that we've been talking about who had been an anchor on the inside of their defensive line. And offensive line. Yeah, both, both, both lines, but on that defensive side trying to stop Mav Harper he was kind of the man in the middle trying to plug it up. Third down and one, one here, and it's Harper. And he springs it into the secondary and is into Champlain Park territory. Down to about the 41-yard line on third down and short. He does have explosive speed if he finds. We talk about him, you know, taking on tacklers and running guys over, but uh, he burst for that one. Yeah, another Champlain Park. This is yeah. three plays in a row they've had. Yeah. And that uh, looks like the... I don't know if it's the wet turf or what. Uh, <laughs> just, I, yeah, it's odd. So it'll be first down and 10 here for Centennial. Next stop at the Champlain Park 43 yard line. Yeah, well, you know, Mav Harper is going right. They went right at where Isaiah Wrights, he was in playing nose tackle or nose guard, and uh, he was right over the center. They went right at where he uh, his replacement was, and uh, no mistake with the amount of yards gained. And this has to be concerning for Champlain Park with the guys having to leave. And you know, this is tough here. It's rainy, it's kind of yep. miserable. You're down 21-0, you're coming out. 
got to find a way to, to inspire your club and then three guys go down injured. It's just, uh, you know, when, when it rains, it pours, pun intended. <laughs> yes. <laughs> First down, 10, 43-yard line for Cummings in the Centennial offense. They have an unbalanced offensive line here with the guard and tackle here to the left of the center and then guard, tackle, and then basically two tight ends, one of which is just another tackle. And here comes Harper. Look at him churn his legs into the secondary. He's inside the 25 to the 22-yard line. <laughs> oh, he ran over one of Champlin Park's defenders. I think that was uh, Schornstein. Yeah, he is a just a load. And... Uh, Another Champlin right Park there. Down. He didn't quite run over him. Schwartzstein tried to tackle him low, and he made a nice little juke move, and then was eventually tackled by Tyler Hansen, but not before a, a big time pickup. And we've got another. That's that's four four in plays yeah. in a row now. Boy, is that bizarre! Yeah, so they're down to the 25. That, that's a gain of 18. This has been the uh, Mav Harper drive so far. Three out of four. Well, He's what do they say about uh, running backs like that? They call them the bell cow. Yeah. Just yeah. keep giving the ball. Yep, feed the beast. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if it's working, don't mess with it. And it's a good, simple play, good, simple offense. You've got the lead 21-0. You just want to run the ball, keep the clock running, move the sticks. Well, Mav Harper came in, ranked. Uh, he's ranked fourth and far, as far as yardage so far this season. Uh, Charles... Charles Languma, did I say that right? Langama. 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 Charles Langama of Maple Grove, 1,200 yards, almost 1,200 yards going into the night, averaging almost 10 a carry. Uh, and uh, F. Harper with 750 yards coming into the night, 6.1 average. Another one of the defensive linemen getting injured here. This is Abdul Batin Janadu as uh, he's walking off to the Champlin Park sideline. Well, he's had a good night, too. Yeah, so that's four defenders that have had to come out of the game because of injuries. First down and 10. Back to the line of scrimmage here, the Centennial offense. They got that power look, two backs. With Burgoon and Harper in the backfield. Split wide right, top of your uh, screen is Burgraff. First down. Harper, dive, flag comes in, picked up maybe two or three. Well, you know that one's coming back from where, where that's throwing. I think a hold will be coming. Yeah, that came from the uh, backfield. Centennial's moving their huddle back. They, they know it. Personal foul, shot block. On the oh. offense, number 59, 64. 15 yards from the previous spot, still first down. Hey, the referee mic's still working yes, in the Yes, it, it is. It, it certainly is. There's, there are times when that gets yeah. a, a little bit uh, a little bit drenched and waterlogged and soaked and shorted out, and who knows what else happens. But uh, it's nice to have that working here tonight. First yeah. down and 10 for the Cougars on the Rebel 39-yard line. Oh, the, PA the PA mic, the PA too. mic is Jeff working Hoffman, tonight, too. Yep. Uh, on our PA as well. That's a good backup if I fall out of the press box and become uh, <laughs> incapable. Yes. And both of us, because yeah. you can do play-by-play, -play too, Jim, of course. But uh, <laughs> chop block brings it back 15. This yeah. will be a first and 25. Legal chop block, 15-yard penalty back to the 40-yard line. And a timeout first called here by Centennial. Well, let's take a look at the standings. We had... Uh, our, Standings are the rankings. Looks like standings to me. Uh, no, oh, the rankings. rankings. There you are. Yeah, mentioned Eden yep. Prairie earlier here tonight. So Eden Prairie, Maple Grove in, in, up here. We've seen uh, they've kind of run through the north with the exception of Champlin Park. They're only lost to Champlin Park. Lakeville North, Minnetonka, Lakeville South, all very solid seasons so far, followed by Centennial. Centennial on the QFR ranking on the, the MinnesotaScore.net. Is, a f is in fifth. 
Mm. Stillwater, Rosemont, Buffalo. Great to see Buffalo back up there. They've got jumped in between 5A and 4A or 6A. Yes. And uh, really uh, a fun program out there. And Woodbury rounds it out. Yeah, they've kind of bounced back, you know, when they had, they had Todd Bauman's kid yep. out there. Yeah, Eden. And boy, was he throwing the ball around. And then they kind of dipped a little bit there, went to 5A, and now they're back to 6A. And there they are in top 10. Here comes the handoff to Burgoon right side, and he's going to uh, scramble and run towards the sideline. Maybe pick up one. Second down and long, second and 24. Aiden Bauman now starting quarterback at uh, South Dakota after a stint at Iowa State. That's right. And Welch, uh, the ty I think it's Tyler Welch, he was the one of the receivers. He's a, the starting tight end at Wyoming and has been for the last, past couple of seasons. Ball is at the 39. Cougars quarterback Cummings <laughs> looking at that sideline. They might also be trying to work the game clock as well. They'll get it snapped here with under five seconds left. Cummings is going to throw in the rain. It is a screen, and it's caught. Bragoon, he's got some room, 30, near sideline, cuts it down for extra yardage down the sideline. Flag did come out, went out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. We'll have to sort out the flag. Usually on a play like that, it's an illegal block downfield, but we'll wait and see. Or really nice design play. They've, that's the second time they've run that. And uh, Burgoon has been yeah, has been there. Just a nice soft little lob. Yep. And they had a penalty on the first one too, I believe. Yeah. Cummings knew he had to loft it over the defensive lineman. Penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. So another uh, spot foul here. We've had a few of those tonight. That was uh, a ways down on the play. So they'll mark it from the spot of the foul, and they're going to bring it back to the 35 of Champlin Park as Centennial. Still in the opening possession of this second half and third quarter. About uh, three and a half minutes in here. So three and a half minutes in, and they've run six plays. Right. <laughs> they have uh, keep moving that clock down. Second down and 21. Cummings to pass again. He plants. <laughs> He's got a man wide open. Burgoon right down the middle. Touchdown. 39-yard pass play. Actually, what, 35? 35, yep. 35. 35-yard yep. 35 pass play. Well, you've uh, increased from one touchdown pass to three so far. Burgoon wide open on that one. That's the second one, uh, second uh, touchdown of the day, third completion or third reception. Yeah, he came in. He did not have a touchdown reception on the season. He now has two. Here's the extra point by Frace. And the snap was a little bit low. And they but he still connects it. So uh, good job by the holder. Dalen Cummings is the quarterback and the holder. Good hands there. Wet field, wet ball, and everything. Was able to uh, handle that low snap in the turf and get it in place where Frace could uh, boom it through here for Centennial. And their lead is almost 28 nothing. Now, now it's 28 uh, nothing all, all of a sudden. Yep. Some scores, uh, local scores. Anoka up 23-3 over Osseo. Maple Grove in a tough match uh, against uh, St. Michael Elberville, 13-7 right now. And Maple uh, Grove leading in that one? Maple Grove, yeah, sorry. Maple Grove is leading 13-7 over STMA. And uh, no score on Coon Rapids and Blaine. Those are the other games last week. Centennial over Anoka, 35-15. Champlin Park, 44. Blaine, 33. Maple Grove 55, Coon Rapids 6. Maple Grove, the defending champions. They lost so much coming in, but uh, seeing them once, and you look at their scores, they're going to be a team that's going to be reckoned with here. Yeah. They're uh, firmly set in the top 10, both Metro and 6A rankings as the uh, kickoff here comes along the near side, and I believe it went out of bounds. It so did. we'll mark yep. it up here with 8.17 left to go in quarter number three. Yeah, there, there is no scoring play that's going to net you 28 points. So right now the, the coaching staff and the players need to understand that, that just 
getting some sustained drives. Getting some sustained drives would be the, the start of this mm -hmm. comeback. Tough to do that, though. Yeah. Do with the conditions and everything. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what the Rebels can do here. you got to put all that beside. you got to forget about the score and the yep. scoreboard. Try to forget about the conditions if you can. First down and 10 after the kickoff out of bounds. Rebels send a man in motion, and it will be a quarterback draw. First play of the second half here for Champlin Park, and Tilke gets it across the 35 to the 36. That's exactly what uh, I think that they need to do. They need to get Telkey involved with his legs a whole lot more, but good start on that one. Going to give him two, second down and eight. Ball almost to the 37, so second down and eight. Russell's the lone back here for Champlin Park and Tilkey. Three down. Defensive lineman and the handoff to Russell. He dropped it. He then basically dribbled the ball back into his hands as it bounced on the turf. And then he gets a first down out of it across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Well, putting the ball on the carpet was a nice deek because <laughs> he was able to juke a uh, defender really quickly. I've got some tempo going right now. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Arthur Russell has some maneuverability yes, and he, he does. is uh, very elusive yes elusivity i think that's the word i'm gonna have to elusiveness first down here's uh, russell again and this time uh i don't care how elusive you are you're not going to get out of the uh, reaches there of centennials number 89 melvin wallace who had him wrapped up good tackle there in the backfield yeah so they get a first down and their their first play again the ball hits the hits the carpet and that has been an issue yeah. here tonight for Champlin Park, and it's just hard to get anything going offensively. Second down, 14. Tilke to pass, rolling. Now he tucks it under, and he's looking for room, and he has it, 45. He's into Centennial territory near sideline, towards the sideline, out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Well, Telkey, that's, that's the explosiveness of Telkey. That's a 24-yard gain, and uh, Telkey... He's got good speed, great vision, because he, I mean, he's six foot four. He's got, he's able to see over linemen, and that one just pulls it down and makes a good decision. Gets that 24. almost that yeah. almost starts and ends up being like a run pass option yep. where he goes back, nothing's open, just run. Now they got four wide receivers. They go to the spread and the pass incomplete. Well, you can see the way that came out of his his the, his, his, his hand. That ball's wet. Deshaun uh, Sturdivant, who had nine receptions coming in, number 14, the intended receiver. You see him there. Clock stops with the incomplete pass and 647. The ball inside the 35 at the 34. This is uh, the furthest that Champlin Park has been able to maneuver into Centennial territory here tonight. Good to see the Russell out in space on a screen or... Four receivers here. It is Russell, so they spread it out, and he's into the secondary, and he has speed. Ten, five. He almost split the safeties, and he's down at about the one. Big run for Russell. 33, we'll call it 32 yards, and it's first and goal for Champlin Park. What, what, a, what a nice job by the O-line, and then Russell gets in space. Boy, he's quick. He's not only quick, he's fast. And the difference is, is one can move laterally, but he's also good, got good straight line speed. Owen Ringen, the free safety for Centennial, prevented that from being about a 34-yard touchdown run for Russell. First and goal. Sneak. Is it a tush push? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, do you hear that a lot now? It's uh, almost uh, ad nauseum. Yeah. On the quarterback sneak here, it is going to be... Short, it appears. Free second down and goal. Well, they have just about doubled their, well, they have doubled their output of the first half on this drive. So, again, that first touchdown is important. Number 73, Ethan Seavold is in there now playing center. Here's another sneak. 
Centennial really stacking it up, and this one's going to be short, too. So now third down and goal at about the one here for Champlin Park. So do you go same thing here? Or do you try to play action maybe to the outside, maybe a rollout or a sweep here to the wide side of the field? You can get some blockers out there. It's inside the one. I think you do it again. I think just keep getting closer. They've gotten inches yep. each time. So now third and goal, Tilkey, full backfield. This time they go with a counter, and it's in there, touchdown. That time they went with the full house, three-man backfield, and it is a touchdown. I want to say on the carry out of that pile was Shornstein, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was Shornstein. Yeah, yeah. Shornstein Shorn. with a carry, number four, touchdown, Champlin Park. Well, he's been all over the place. He's made some tackles this time. Some tough yards. He had a carry in the first half. That one got banged around a little bit, but landed in the blue paint. One-yard run for Shornstein. Here's the extra point for Champlin Park. Shornstein was a little bit dinged up there. He's now down to take the snap. It's a high snap, brings it down, and the kick is up and good. 28-7, Champlin Park, the Rebels get on the board, and that is exactly what the doctor ordered here for Champlin Park. They would have loved to have made it 21-7, but could not stop Centennial on the opening possession of the second half. But they turn right around on their first possession of the second half, and uh, really something positive to talk about here. It maybe helped them throughout the rest of this game with 454 left to go in the third quarter, Jim. Yeah, and let's see if we get some of those uh, injured uh, Rebels back on defense, front on the defensive front, and see if they can get a stop and a, a quick stop and a return of the possession. Of That's the what's going to take. Yep. And uh, you know, Centennial has taken good care of the ball all night long. Yeah. Champlin Park would really benefit if they could uh, somehow create or cause a turnover, mm -hmm. but uh, Centennial has been very stingy in that department uh, here tonight, and I think they have been for the most part all season long. You don't go 5-1 and one against the kind of schedule they play and turn the ball no, over a lot. Nope. No. And they are who they are. They, I mean, they, they're not going to reinvent themselves, although we've seen a little bit more passing tonight than, than uh, what they've done throughout the year. Averaging 71 yards on. Here's the game. squib by Champlin Park. It'll be taken at an inside the 20-yard line by Burgoon. Burgoon zigs and zags across the 30, across the 35. And they're going to give them the 38-yard line. Centennial will have it. And Champlin Park, they did stop Centennial the one time early on in the ball game, opening possession. But uh, since then, uh, the Cougar offense has been uh, tough to stop here. Well, 106 yards through the air. Of course, these are all unofficial stats, but uh, and two touchdowns really has been the difference. Uh, the Jim? Yes. Those are all the stats we have to go by. <laughs> they are as official to me as any yeah, stats right. are ever and have ever been. <laughs> uh, you're right. First down and 10 <laughs> at the 38-yard line. Give yourself some credit. Official. Those are official uh, QCTV stats. Yes, yep, yep. First down and 10, 38-yard line. Here is Cummings for Harper across the 40 to the 41-yard line. And uh, Champlin Parks, it's good to see uh, – uh, Janadu back in there, Abul Batin Janadu for Champlin Park. He came out with an injury, got a little bit dinged up. He's back in there at the defensive tackle position, made the tackle there, picked up seven, or sec, uh, picked up three, second down and seven. Yeah, Isaiah Wright has an ice pack. I'm guessing his return is doubtful. Yeah, and he was a stalwart yep. on the interior of the defensive line for Champlin Park here tonight. And that's key to slowing down this Centennial offense. Second down, seven. Keeper, Cummings. Off of the block. The lead block is by the fullback, Harper, who he put the ball in his belly, pulled it out on the option. He comes around and picks up yardage across the 45 to the 46-yard line, brings up a third down and short, third and three. You know, Cummings has been kind of punished on these tackles. It's uh, And he pops right back up. I'm going to call it third and two. Ball's at the 46, need to get to the 48. So third down.
Cummings under center. Looks like the starting center is back in there for Centennial. And the give to the right side, and that is going to be short of the first down. Got maybe a yard out of that two yards to go. He can, nice job in gang tackling, getting some help from, her, from your friends over there. Harper kept driving his legs and just was spinning like he was in sand. Alex Larkett, who is the starting center, is back in there. There was a time there that Benson Hartman was playing uh, the uh, center position here for Centennial. It's fourth down and a yard. Cougars from that far hash mark. Two wide receivers right. Harper is the lone back. Cummings under center. Now he steps back up. He's going to have to hurry. Yeah, just two seconds left on the play clock, and they called timeout just before the play clock ran out. So Centennial using some time there, and I think they were just uh, – they're probably going to punt the ball away anyway. Yeah. They may have thought about where they're going to try and draw them offside and they decided to get it down to uh, one on the play clock, play clock, and they will call timeout here with 2.35 left to go in the third quarter. 28-7 Centennial. Yeah, I think they wanted Marcus Whiting in there. They're the bigger back than Harper. He started to jog in as soon as soon uh, as soon as the timeout was called. I think the personnel was probably off and didn't want to risk a uh, uh, delay of game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 28-7 here, you yeah. also don't want to do something where you try to do something that you don't normally do Yep. and and run a play to try and convert. And, you know, that sometimes results in a big play for the other team. And uh, you're up on a team 28-7. You don't want to give them any reason to get more excited than they are right now after getting their yes. first points of the game. Yeah. This is a big – like you said, a big – Play for a lot bigger for Champlin Park. Yeah, fourth and a yard from midfield here for Cummings and the Cougars. Burgoon and Harper back in the backfield. This time I think that's Whiting instead. It is Whiting, and he will dive it for the first down. Needed a yard, picked up almost two. In fact, I think it is going to be two. First down Cougars. No signal yet, but I think they clearly have it in all the Cougars are signaling first down, and now a referee obliges as well and gives them the first down. So a conversion here on fourth down for Centennial, and their possession will continue. Well, the personnel grouping, they wanted to get it to the bigger back. They did. He was able to muscle, and he had to muscle. There was uh, some good penetration right up at the, at the line of scrimmage. Able to get that first down was Marcus Whiting. Burgraff split wide left. Offset eye, handoff Harper, and he's going to be stacked up. Big, strong tackle by Tyler Hansen, 215, six foot four, And he is able to stop uh, Harper in his tracks and tackle him for no gain, second and ten. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you're not going to say that a lot with uh, when you hand it off to Harper. He's got six carries so far this uh, in the second half. Ball resting at the 49. They gave him just a little forward progress, less than a yard. So second down and a long nine for Centennial. Cummings, Harper again, battering Ram into the Champlin Park side of the field, down to the 46-yard line. Third down. He just pops right back up. He's uh, And he continues. Jim, I don't think we've seen the last two games seen him get tackled backwards he, he continues to just fall forward yeah he's had a couple of no gainers here tonight I don't think he's had any times that he's been tackled behind the line of scrimmage that's very difficult Champlin Park has done a pretty good job here tonight slowing him down third and four Harper again on third down short he'll bring up another fourth down so Champlin Park's defense doing what they need to do here, forcing Centennial into these fourth down situations. But Centennial has the luxury of being up 28 to seven, so they can go for it on fourth down and one, two, or three here and, you know, and they're try gonna to convert. They'll have to run this play too. Uh, play clock and uh, the game clock a couple seconds apart. Yep, final 20 seconds of the third quarter. 
Two seconds uh, difference, play clock, game clock. Game clock has two more seconds, fourth and two. Cummings, quick sing, swing pass to Burgoon. He's going to get a first down, and then he challenges the tackler. And Shorenstein, Shorenstein makes the tackle, but not before what appears to be another first down. See how close it is. It is a first down, just shy of the 40-yard line. Clock will stop because we moved the uh, chains here with five seconds remaining in the third quarter. Well, I'm sure the Centennial will run it out. Yep. There's no need to uh, snap it. They will start the clock, and that will be our final play of the third quarter. Final 12 minutes coming up here from Champlain Park High School. A rainy Thursday night. Umbrellas ruling the night, as are the Centennial Cougars, leading at 28-7 after three on QCTV Sports. recognition for 2022 including 10 telly awards and two ACM hometown media awards QCTV is dedicated to providing high quality content for our community. We are grateful for the support. And we look forward to another exciting year here at QCTV. Take a look at that damp turf here, Champlain Park High School. It glistens with the rain. As uh, we start the fourth quarter, 28-7 in favor of Centennials. Flip sides. First down and 10 from the Champlain Park 41-yard line. Full house backfield here with three backs and ends up being Cummings with a keeper around the left end. Gets a couple before stepping out of bounds. I think the last drive that uh, the Cougars had was a, or the first time we really saw them behind the sticks. Uh, they just... Two yards, they'll, they'll live with two yards. They'll get three yards on the next, three or four on the next, and and, uh, and they're just they're just trying to be positive every yeah every uh, carry. Now they've got three in the backfield. And even if they have to punt, just make sure they don't turn the ball over. Yeah. Yep. And uh, here's Harper again with the carry, gain of three. They have Harper, the uh, workhorse, coming into the game tonight. 122 carries, averaging 6.1 per carry, 748 yards. And what did you have at halftime for him? He had 58 yards mm -hmm. at halftime, and we're probably close to, to 100 right now. Big games. He had 170 against Coon Rapids, 186 against Blaine, 123 against Anoka, his 100-yard games here this season. It's going to bring up a third and five. And, again, you can see Centennial trying to use as much time off of that uh, play clock, and that, of course, runs down the game clock as well. Here's a toss here on the near side. And Burgoon will get to the corner, and he's going to be shy of the first down, or very close to it, in fact. 31-yard line was the uh, yard to gain. And the mark might be just shy of that here. And I'll bring up fourth down and very short here for Centennial. Burgoon's going off. I think, uh, I think he got a little nicked on that one. Burgraff comes in for him. Whiting will be in the backfield here on fourth down, so they'll go with their uh, big backfield. Kellen Binder lined up as a tight end. Fourth down, less than a yard. And the sneak by Cummings, and he's got it. Good push by that centennial offensive line inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Leading the way there, the right guard, Trenton Kemble, and Alex Lark in the center, and... Other offensive linemen there on the interior, getting them that first down. Cummings scored a touchdown on that sneak last week, but good put. Like you mentioned, that offensive line really had a head of steam going into that defensive line, and, and Cummings, no problem, three yards, three yards 
gained on that one. Whiting and Harper still in the backfield here with the quarterback Cummings, almost exclusively from under center here all night long. And it's Whiting to the 27 pickup of two. Yards after contact. Yak, that one, he was met at the line of scrimmage, still able to get a couple of yards. Janadu making the tackle there for some for the Champlain Park Rebels. Centennial in no hurry here. Second and eight. It's been basically raining since the start of the game. It was very light. Then it almost stopped. May have stopped there for a little bit. Then it really started coming down end of the first half. Here's Cummings keeping, stretching, and turning. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a positive yard. Trying to sweep it around on the left side on the keep. But uh, good job by Champlin Park. They really stretched that one out. You take a look at the radar. Yeah, it's. Where are we? There's Minneapolis. Yeah, heavy rain on the way. Mm -hmm. Just and keeps it's here. coming. Uh, yeah, it's here right now. Yeah, it's just going to keep coming from yep. the south. Third down and seven for Centennial. So it looked like he was going to be tackled. But a loss of about four, and Cummings was still able to get mm -hmm. one. Yeah, good job, good speed. Able to kind of cut the corner and make this uh, third down and somewhat manageable instead of third down and nine or third and ten. <laughs> third and seven, and timeout. So the, the game clock wasn't running. I wonder why they uh, went that far. Hey, let's take a look at uh, schedules upcoming for these two teams. We've got one game left. This one's going to be a good one. Lakeville South coming off a loss last week. I think if, you last think, week yeah. if, if you think Centennial runs the ball a lot, <laughs> yeah. Lakeville South <laughs> yes. runs the, the Elk River power T offense. So yes, I'd yes, they do. Yep. And uh, this one right here, uh, this should be a dandy. Centennial against Rosemount. They'll be up in Centennial. Rematch of last year's state quarterfinal. Yep. Won by Rosemont, 27 to nothing, and then Rosemont would go on and uh, lose in the championship game to Mount Maple Grove in the prep bowl. Yep. And uh, Rosemont looks good again this year. Yeah, Rosemont, Lakeville South, Lakeville North, <laughs> all three of those from the uh, yeah. old suburban east, suburban yeah. south. Those big schools yes. that are down there. You know, Farmington's a big school yep. as well. They're struggling a little bit this year in, in football, but saw them uh, earlier in the season call the game for another entity uh, down at Rochester Mayo. Never been to Rochester Mayo High School before. That was kind of fun. Third down. First time I've ever seen the water tower that looks like uh, corn. Here's Harper right up the middle, breaking tackles, tough to bring down. Finally gets upended inside the 15 to the 13-yard line, but it's a first down pickup here and a conversion for Mav Harper converting the third down and seven. Just a quick hitter right up front, and Jornstein can't, uh, Jornstein can't bring him down. There, there aren't many high school football players that will bring him down. He's tough to bring down one-on-one, -on -one, yep. especially once he gets moving down the field and gets those legs and gets uh, that momentum, that inertia going downfield. First down and 10, just inside the 15 here for Centennial. They're looking to add to their lead here. They keep it on the ground again. This time it's not Harper, it's Whiting. And uh, he burrows his way for almost nine. Whiting, a lot of Whiting and a lot of Harper right now. Mayo, that's, uh, you know, they moved up this year. Yes, they moved from 5A to 6A. And they're holding their own. Brainerd dropped down. Brainerd yep. was 6A last year for the last two years, and they dropped down from 6A to 5A, and, and uh, Mayo bumped up, and that means they're playing the Lakevilles and yes, the, yep. the, the, the Rosemonts and so forth, and that's south side of, of the Metro. If you can stay healthy, you can probably compete. If you can't, then you're in trouble. Rochester Mayo's got one of the best receivers yep. uh, in the state. Here's Whiting. Stood up, pushed back by the Champlin Park defense. Little to no gain on the play. 
third down. Yeah, they had a returning quarterback. Too. I think Mayo had a returning quarterback too that uh, knows how to deliver the ball. Third down and a couple. Can you just imagine what this field would look like right now if it was a, <laughs> the old a good old-fashioned natural turf? Yeah. Third and two. Here's Harper, and he's in. Leaning forward, touchdown. That weight, that momentum always going forward, and Harper into the end zone. Touchdown for Centennial. Well over an eight-minute drive. We've seen five minutes just escape on... Uh, on this side of the fourth quarter. Harper, you see the line right there. Those big guys up there just uh, taking care of business. Seven-yard touchdown run yep. for Harper. What is that for him now here tonight? Is that his third or Se second? Second, second touchdown, second touchdown yep. of the night. 6.54 left to go in the fourth quarter. He came in with 14 touchdowns rushing. Give him 16 now. And the uh, point after by Frace is up and good here at six with 6.54 left to go here in this one tonight at Champlain Park High School. Centennials now up their lead, 35-7. So Bragoon with uh, two touchdowns, Harper with two, one by Cummings, 13-yard option by Cummings, and uh, two touchdown passes by, by Cummings as well, which uh, he went from tripled. Tripled, yes, it, basically uh, tripled is where his output for the season. And that's something I'm sure Champlin Park didn't expect, but uh, that is a wrinkle, and that's what other teams are going to have to worry about, that uh, if they are able to shut down Centennial's running game, not completely, but to a certain yeah. point where they're not able to be as successful, they can throw and go to the air and uh, keep uh, the defense as honest. Well, you've got to commit in, in, to stopping their strength, and when you do that, you're going to have assets that uh, uh, are not in the place to be able to stop a throw. Harper kicking off. Champlin Park on the return. It's received there by McGuire Borboom, and Borboom gets to the outside and gets towards midfield on the kickoff return here for the Rebels. That's and been a real strength of the Rebels tonight. Their, their, kick, their kick return is... Yeah. Giving them some good field possession. Let's see if they can do something with it here. They're going to put it down at the 41 for the Champlain Park Rebels. Next week, of course, is the MEA weekend. Many games on Wednesday, some on Thursday. Most of the 6A schools will take up the Thursday games. And then uh, some playoffs begin on Tuesday. The following week after MEA. So here we go. I mean, playoff season just about here. Tilke, the quarterback, plants, throws, intercepted. That's picked off. And on the return down the far sideline is a Caden Coppersmith. And he's going to be tackled and goes out of bounds. Change of possession here at the 27-yard line. I don't think Tilke saw him. Well, the, both linebackers, Ball and, uh, and Coppersmith, just fell back into the zone. They took two or three steps back, and uh, and Tilke delivered a strike right to. Looks like there there might be uh, a there flag. There might yeah. have been a flag on the return. Yes, there is. The There's a flag on there. the forty yard line. No. Is it post possession, or was it illegal contact when the ball was in the air on the defense? Holy on the defense. Yes, it was. 10 yards from the previous spot, first down. So no turnover, no INT, and Champlin Park will get a first down out of it. One of the, yeah. one of the Centennial defenders thought that uh, that pickoff and Copperson's going to be able to take it to the house, but because uh, he put his hands up right away <laughs> like it was going, yep. going, gone. As it turns out, it doesn't count. Champlin Park gets the penalty and a first down, moving the ball to the 50-yard line. Actually, across the 50 to the 49 of Centennial, we'll call it, with 6.40 left yeah. to go in the fourth quarter, Jim. Yeah, chain, I think they're going to be a couple seconds while they move the chains. I don't know why they haven't moved yet. Wait to get reset there. 
Well, one of the games that I was doing, I can't remember where it was, the chains actually got kinked up. Oh, no. So, yeah, the, the, so the, the, the was links got kink, kinked up, and they had to, like, find a pliers or a leatherman somewhere. <laughs> Here's Tilke rolling, running, scrambling, and finding the far sideline inside the Centennial 45 to the 44-43. Second down here for Champlin Park. Well, that's what he's good at right there is rolling out and uh, deciding to pull it down. And he's, you know, That's as good as a five-yard pass, and uh, he's into the game. Champlin Park trying to finish this game on a positive note here, trailing 35-7 to and their home field on a rainy Thursday night. Tilke rolling, throws, and it's low and incomplete. He was looking for Berge. There were defenders surrounding him there, and it uh, falls to the, to the turf. But he was going to be a tight window to fit in anyways, but uh, it looked like... Either he didn't, uh, he started to slip on his feet or the ball started to slip out of his hand when he th delivered it. Went about five yards short into the ground. Third down, six. Russell in the backfield here for Tilke, ready to take the snap. The quarterback for Champlin Park. He's going to step up and he's going to run. Makes a move left, then right, and he's got a first down. Inside the 35 of Centennial to the... 32 or three. First down for Champlin Park. You're in a zone to defense. You've got you've got to make sure that you're marking that quarterback. And just to aggressive rush. And a nice job by Telke to get that first down. Champlin Park just a few years removed from uh, finishing a runner up to Wyzetta in the 2019 Prep Bowl. It's a magical run that year for the Rebels. 33-yard line, Russell takes a handoff out of the shotgun. Gets a couple there, second down. Running back back then for Champlain Park Rebels, Sean Shipman. He's uh, running back number one for St. Thomas. The Division One yes. St. Thomas Tommies. And he's doing well. A couple hundred-yard games this year. As have the Tommies. They've moved into that Pioneer League. And... Uh, they won the league last year. <laughs> Second down. Of course, it's not a major Power 5 conference or anything. Here's a toss, and it's going to be tipped and incomplete. One receiver and like three and a half coverman yes. down the near sideline trying to go to Amir Drissi, who has five receptions coming into the game tonight. But that falls incomplete. Drissi was looking for a – trying to help out the officials with uh, the call of uh, interference. Centennial uh, dropping their defensive backs there, playing a little bit deeper coverage here to guard against the long pass. That's on X the other day, or Twitter, the former named Twitter. Some coaches out with spray bottles, spraying a player as uh, coming down for punt to, to get them ready for a rain-filled game. One of the strangest things I've seen. During practice? During practice. Third down, eight. Here's the run by Tilke. He's got a first down. Made a nice move. He made a man miss as uh, Centennial's Coppersmith, who thought he had a, a pick of Tilke a few plays ago. Here, Tilke got around him and got a first down for Champlin Park, just shy of the 20. Yeah, that's weird. I've heard of them, you know, on higher levels, turning up the music and, yes, and the sound yep. if they're going to be playing, you know, in a stadium that's loud or something like that. But uh, actually breaking out the garden hose and <laughs> sp spraying the players down, that's a unique uh, Approach, certainly, from the 22-yard line. Tilke, first down pass, uh, juggling incomplete. Looking for Russell on that side. Play before was a designed run. Tilke was going to take one step back and go. This one looks for Russell right on the side. That's his third in his progression right there. Gets it over. Well, not Russell. That's Shorts Shorenstein. And uh, muscled under. Good defensive play by the Cougars. Split wide right is uh, Sturdivant. Wide receiver on that right side, top of your screen. Four receivers out here for Tilke, who's going to throw it on second down and 10. He comes to the near side, and the pass is just a bit high for Gabersmore and over his hands and incomplete. Out of bounds, four and a half left. 
Tilke, yeah. This is this is Tilkey's game. He'd be able to roll out. I know that the weather conditions probably aren't uh, conducive for for what he really likes to do. But uh, you know, you, the last two drives, the uh, Rebels have looked much better. Rain has subsided a little bit here, not c coming down quite as hard as it did end of the first half and into the second half through halftime here. It's actually lightened up a little bit. There's another pass here intended for Gabazemore, and uh, that is incomplete. So fourth down. And Tilke looks, uh, looks in, and I'm sure he's going to have another rollout one way or the other. Yeah, there's a situation, too, you know, uh, Champlin Park coaches look up at the scoreboard 35-7, but still an opportunity to work on things and get yep. an opportunity in game situations here in a fourth down and 10. 21-yard line, rolling, Tilkey, then throwing against his body the other direction. Did he catch it? He was right at the marker. Let's see where he went down, if that's a first down or not. Centennial's Mike Diggins saying it is not. And it doesn't look like that it is. That ball was uh, caught, was it 14 or 84? That was Drisser, yeah. Yeah. So he, and he, as I was watching, like, you got to come back for the ball, but he had to make sure he got the yardage for the first down, and it was just about a just yard short. short. for yeah. Drissy. Number 84, yep. Amir Drissy, five receptions entering the game tonight. Has a touchdown on the season, and he was just shy of that first down. So Centennial will take over here with 419 left in the game and a 35 to 7 lead. They've subbed down here, new quarterback, new running backs, now running the offense for Centennial. Brody McNamara is in there as the backup uh, quarterback. We'll try to get some of the numbers of the running backs and uh, get their names as well here offensively for Centennial. Noel Sig is into the game now. They've uh, subbed down on the offensive line. So a lot of new numbers. A lot of clean, cleaner looking jerseys out there <laughs> yes. now. You don't get quite as dirty you know, on the turf. You can still get uh, just a little bit ground up and a little darker and, you know, the wetter it is and who knows what else. But second down and seven. They'll send a man in motion. McNamara will keep it. And he'll be stood up. There's the whistle, and they'll blow that one dead. And they're not slowing down like this. This is uh, a good good reps for your second teamers. They'll, yeah. they'll move to the line. They won't worry about the play clock. Brody McNamara is a 5'10", 165-pound junior quarterback. Cummings is a senior, so it... Uh, you never know, it might be McNamara's team next year for Centennial, so getting a chance to get some varsity snaps. He's done so in some other games. Third down. Third and four here for the Cougars. Trying to finish off this win here in week seven. They keep it on the ground, maybe a yard, about the 20. Cross the 20, maybe by a half a yard. Clock runs with the now approaching 240. Left to go. Hey, Jim, let's take a look at our broadcast schedule coming up. Uh, tomorrow night, it'll be, uh, that's a good one, 5A. It'll be Sock Rapids Rice against Andover, uh, both in the top 10 and both a, a top sectional. We got uh, volleyball coming up next week against, uh, as we get into sectionals for Champlin Park. Lakeville South versus Andover in football. I don't know if that one is quite correct, but uh, then we've got the holiday, uh, the Halloween parade coming up in Anoka, and I'm sure you'll be there for that, Jim. I will not. I'll be somewhere calling hockey. Fourth down and one. <laughs> this one is going to be punted and bounding its way into the Champlin Park side of the field. And it's inside the uh, Champlin Park 45 at the 44-yard line. And the Rebels will take over there with 2.01 left to go. Assuming the Champlin Park volleyball team is uh, good this year. I've not seen them. I think they were last... I think they were ranked third is what I saw last. Yeah, that would uh, qualify as being pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. A big school class for volleyball. Minnesota, very good volleyball state. Wyzetta again. I believe they're up on top. They've got the two aren't sisters playing. Yeah. Uh, aren't they the defending champs? They, they are the defending state champs from yep. last year. Yep. Ball is resting at the 44-yard line. 
Tilke in there, gives to Russell, first down and 10. He stops and starts again, gets to the 50, gain of six on first down for Champlin Park. He's a good runner. He just doesn't give up. Good five yards on that, that play. Champlin Park soccer team is uh, heading to the second, the uh, semifinals, I believe, in sections. I think they're playing. Second and four. New quarterback in there now, number 17 running the offense, Gavin Stahl. And the snap bobbled, and they recontrol and get back close to the original line of scrimmage. Gavin Stahl, backup quarterback, 6'2", he's a big quarterback, 6'2", 220. 11th grader running the offense here for Champlin Park in the uh, waning minutes of this one. Yeah, pretty amazing. You know, the size of these high school quarterbacks is just, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, well, those were forward. linemen yeah. in my day. Yes, absolutely. You're 220, you're playing on the line. You're not the quarterback. Nope. Third down and four. And on the ground for the Rebels to about the 45-yard line. And we're going to get a stoppage here, obviously, with the movement of the chains. First down here for Champlin Park. Again, valuable reps. Yeah, one of the uh, backup running backs, Austin Tucker, who also has four receptions on the season, took the carry that time for Champlin Park. And they'll snap the ball one more time here on a first down and 10. Oh, a little, a little inside razzle -dazzle. reverse play. And with the ball in his hands, going the other way is Luke Gilk, who has a chance to carry. He's more known as a pass-catching tight end, but he actually just ran that for a first down. And the clock is going to continue to run here, and that appears to be our final play of the game, and it will be. So Centennial comes in here week seven of the season, and they up their record to six and one. And meanwhile, Champlin Park falls to three and four, and looks like this Cougar team, they're kind of primed here to make yes. a run in the postseason. We've seen them the last two weeks here on QCTV, and they were outstanding, and here's our player of the game. Yeah, it's Ty Bragoon, who had uh, two touchdown passes and uh, three or four all completion or four receptions all day. Not only that, was outstanding out in the backfield as well. Beautiful catch there mm -hmm. right towards the end of the first half. And then in the second half, 35-yard touchdown catch wide open as, uh, the, Ch as uh, the Cougars and Ty Bragoon able to carry the score to 35-7. to seven. Rainy night here tonight. Champlin Park High School, Centennial 6-1. Champlin Park now 3-4. Centennial hosts Rosemont. Champlin Park will host Lakeville South. And then off to the playoffs. Thanks, everybody in the truck. Thanks to our camera and everybody outside. Yes, yes. Having to deal with the rain and the elements. Uh, kudos to you guys for getting this on. And when the weather is inclement like this, it's a great service for all the fans that don't want to sit out in the bleachers in a cold, rainy night, sit home and watch it here on television. For Jim Childs, I'm Jim Erickson. For everybody else with our QC TV team, good night, everybody.